And in this particular video, we're going to solve this linear equation. And you can see the variable we're dealing with here is g. So we want to solve this equation for g. Now, this is a type of problem that those of you that are like in an Algebra 1 course should be able to do quite easily. And even those of you that might be taking pre-algebra should know how to do this problem as well. And also, I'm going to suggest that you put away your calculator. Uh, but you, if you need your calculator, you, uh, you know, don't feel bad about using it. But try to do this problem without the aid of a calculator. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the solution in just one second. And then uh, well, I'm going to show you the answer. And then I'm going to walk through the complete solution uh, step by step. Also, if you need uh, math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the answer here. We're looking for G. What is the solution to this linear equation? And here it is. G is equal to negative 25 over 33. Okay, so how'd you do? Well, if you got this right, that's very, very good. Matter of fact, certainly good enough in my book for a happy face, an A plus, a 100%. And a few stars, so you can tell your friends and family that you conquered a basic linear equation. Okay, they would be very impressed uh, with that information. So, listen, here's the deal. Okay, if you're taking uh, like pre algebra, certainly algebra one, and you cannot solve this equation, or if you had difficulty with it, well, that's a good indication that you need to go back and, uh, you know, relearn some things. Now, the only exception to that is if you haven't yet studied equations to this degree, but um, you'll kind of, you know, be the judge of that. If you're studying equations or if you're past solving equations, I'm going to classify this problem as a pretty easy problem. Okay. Now, of course, you know, I'm a math teacher. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's easy for me. But again, for those of you that are studying these types of courses, you should be able to handle this uh, without too much difficulty. Now, I would said this is what we call a linear equation. Okay, now the reason why it's a linear equation is we only have like one variable and there's no powers. We don't have like g squared or the square root of g. So it's just g by itself. Uh, now, you know, I, I can go, on, go into a whole nother discussion about linear equations, but basically this is a good old fashioned basic algebra equation. All right, so let's talk about the steps we need to do. So the first thing is this, okay? And I'll talk about some general principles here in a moment, but we need to have a game plan to solve for G, okay? So let's just kind of get the, the big picture down here uh, first before we start the problem. So the first thing is you want to get all your variable terms on the left and all your numbers on the right, okay? So that's going to be kind of a big part of the, uh, the steps we first need to do. We need to get all of our variable terms. A variable term would be like 8G or 5G, all these things. We want to get all our variables to the left and all of our numbers all by themselves, like 1, 7, all these numbers to the right-hand side. Okay, so that's one of the things we're going to be focusing on. So before we start this problem, though, before we can start moving things around from uh, one side of the equation to the other, Notice that I have a number outside of parentheses like this, okay? So in this case, this is a negative 4. Anytime you see parentheses in an algebra equation or something like this, this is an uh, indication that you're going to have to apply the distributive property. So let me uh, be a little bit more crystal clear about this. When you have parentheses around a sum or a difference, anything where there's some addition going on or subtraction going on, things like this, that is going to be your first thing that you're going to want to address in this equation. Okay, so we need to apply the distributor property. That's step number one. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so now that we have the kind of big picture, we know we have to apply the distributor property. Let's go ahead and pick up some momentum in uh, doing this problem. All right, so we're going to take this three and we're going to multiply it by this 2g. So 3 times 2g is 6g. By the way, if you don't understand the distributive property any of this stuff, check out uh, one or two of my courses. Uh, I would suggest pre-algebra or algebra 1. I teach you everything you need to know to be successful in solving algebra equations and much, much more. All right, so 3 times 2g, that's 6g. Then 3 times 7 is 21. All right, let's go over here now. When you have this minus sign, you could be very careful. You need to recognize that this is a negative number. Okay, now if you wanted to be extra 
um, kind of explicit about it, you can take this subtraction operator, you can turn this, turn this into a plus negative, okay? But we're going to be distributing a negative 4, not just a positive 4. So it's negative 4 times 8G, that's negative 32G, and then negative 4 times this positive 1, that's negative 4, okay? So a lot of students get confused with these subtraction signs, but hopefully you got that right. All right, so now let's go ahead and continue on. Now, before we start moving uh, numbers and variables to, uh, to either side of the equation, let's clean up what we have by combining like terms, okay, or numbers. So let's look on this side of the equation. We have 6G plus 21. Well, we can't combine uh, these. This is as simple as we can, uh, you know, we can have this expression here. But here, we have a 5G and a minus 32G. These are like terms. In other words, we can combine these. So we just add the coefficients. So 5 plus a negative 32 is a negative 27. Okay, so that's what we need to do next. So we have 6G plus 21 is equal to negative 27G minus 4. Okay, so we're looking pretty good. And at this point, notice we have a number here, okay? And this number is on the left-hand side of the equation. We're going to want to move this over and link it up with this number. Okay, remember I said numbers are going to be on the right-hand side. And variable terms like this uh, guy right here, negative 27G, is going to have to be on the other side. So now let's go ahead and start focusing on moving these numbers and terms on the proper side of the equation. Real quick, if you want my best math instruction, you definitely got to check out my full courses Again, you can find links to these in the description of this video, but they span basic math to advanced math and everything in between. Okay, so let's keep going with this problem, and don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. And uh, let's go ahead and see how we do this right now. Okay, let's move this 21. We have a positive 21. It's on the left-hand side. I want it on the right-hand side. So how can I do this? Well, one of the main concepts of algebra is whatever you do to one side of the equation, as long as you do the ex exact same thing on the other side, you are okay. okay. In other words, you didn't break anything in the equation. So if I have a plus 21 over here and I want to get rid of it, well, I, let's just get rid of it. Let's just, just subtract a 21 away from this and we will have removed this 21 from this side. But if we do that, then we have to do the exact same thing on this side of the equation as well. Okay. So we're going to subtract 21 from both sides of the equation. Then we're going to add down in a column manner. So 6G plus nothing is 6G. Positive 21 minus 21 is 0. There's no need to write that 0. It just kind of disappears. Negative 27G plus nothing is negative, uh, negative 27G. And negative 4 plus a negative 21 is negative 25. Okay, so now... Uh, what's the situation? Well, we have all our numbers on the right-hand side, but now we need to get all of our variables on the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and move this negative uh, 27G over to this side of the equation. So how can we do that? Well, let's use the same technique as we did with the numbers. So this is a negative 27G. Let's add a 27G to it so it kind of disappears on this side of the equation. But if I do this, if I add a 27G on this side, I got to add it on this side. So now let's go ahead and add down in a column manner. 6G plus 27G is 33G. The 27Gs here go away, right? Negative 27G plus positive 27G is G is a zero. And then negative 25 plus a zero is negative 25. Okay, so I'm kind of really going nice and slow for those of you that are kind of learning this. So some of you are like, you know, like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, pick up the speed because I already know this. And you're like, you know, you're, you're, I'm, I want to move on to some other videos and yada, yada, listen. I make these, uh, you know, I explain things at a pace, assuming that someone's watching this video because they, you know, don't know how to do this type of problem, right? So I'm going to go and explain, th explain things at a nice, easy, friendly place, pace so all people can get what's going on. All right, so here we have 33G is equal to negative 25. So how do we solve for G? Well, we want 1G, okay? 1G is the solution. 1G is the same thing as G, okay? So how can I get a 1G? Well, I have a 33 times G. Well, if I divide both sides of the equation by 33, 33 divided by 33 is a 1, okay? Or 1G, or I could just write that as G. So that's what I need to do again. Notice I'm doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. In this case, I'm dividing both sides of the equation by 33. 
So 33 divided by 33 is G or 1G. And then, of course, we have negative 25 over 33. Okay, so that is the final answer. And I think this is a pretty, you know, not overly difficult problem, but really what I wanted to do in this uh, problem was um, bring out a lot of the common uh, characteristics of solving linear equations, namely using the distributive property and practicing how to move numbers and variable terms to either side of the equation. Remember, algebra, a huge part of algebra is solving various type of equations, okay? This type of equation here is a linear equation, but you have all different types of equations, quadratic equations, systems of equations, exponential equations, rational equations, radical equations, and uh, all those uh, equation types you solve uh, completely different from one another, okay? So you can't be like, I need to get better at solving equations in algebra. Well, there's a lot to know, okay? So don't let this stuff overwhelm you. Uh, if you need more help with solving equations, again, check out more of my videos on my YouTube channel or my Algebra 1 or pre-algebra course or Algebra 2 or pre-calculus, whatever level you might be in. But uh, if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.